Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. Sean, I heard last month while I was out on vacation, you and Jeremy made some progress. Yeah, we went rogue. Oh, with, ooh. <laughs> So yeah. this is, of course, the maker puzzle that our friend Jen Schachter designed for South by Southwest. And mm -hmm. you and I had assembled this very first one, uh, one out of nine. Yeah. And uh, this one uh, celebrates woodworking and uh, has George Nakashima, a uh, famous Japanese architect and woodworker on it. And you and Jeremy. Yeah, we did the electronics computer. So it has a punch card and a good old fashioned data bank here and an Arduino. Yes, and the person on it is actually Grace Hopper, uh, one of the very first computer engineers. She worked on the team that developed the UNIVAC That's computer awesome. system, and she made like one of the first compilers out there. Yeah, so really beautiful puzzle pieces, and we're gonna do another one today. Yeah. So what have you chosen? Well, everybody will be happy to know that we are doing the one that will actually connect these. Yes! <laughs> we, we want to do this because it had Lego on it, and then Jeremy was guessing, so I was like, we gotta do a computer, it has an Arduino on it. Um, so we're gonna do the one in between, which is uh, manufacturing uh, uh, and engineering. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And because uh, anyone can do these, the files are, of course, they're online or on Thingiverse. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a laser cutter, uh, you can cut your own. What you're doing, is creating accents. We have yeah. these wonderful different types of acrylics. You have a great metallic finish on that computer. What are the accents we're using today? We're gonna do some more metallic. We loved it so much. Uh, we're gonna do mostly brass for some nuts and bolts today. And we're gonna do just a tiny bit of silver. Um, so this is the same. The yeah, same material, but a different finish. Yeah, we've got copper, brass, and silver, like aluminum kind of look. It's fantastic. And um, so, uh, we did find that getting the, the, so there's a protective plastic on these that prevents scorching. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we found that it is a little tough to get it off. And uh, uh, Disney uh, Imagineer and friend of Tested, Dave Goldberg, uh, gave me some really nice tips on that. Ah. Um, and we know Dave from, he did the uh, studio scale He's a uh, big member Star of the RPF. Wars models. He has yeah. great studio scale models. He made, he's laser cut some crazy replicas of like yeah. Death Star gun turrets. Uh, so what was his so, pro tip? So his tip on that was peel the plastic off, um, but then you might get scorching. Of course. But then take some dishwashing detergent, right? Okay. And we're just gonna put a few drops on this. Now I'm just gonna do the upper corner. I probably put way too much on there. Okay. Because um, we're not doing a, a, a really big piece right now. And he said just smear it around until it's like a nice thin film. And that absorbs all the scorching. It, it, he said what it does is it, it creates a protective layer that, yeah, is going to help with the scorching. And you wash that off, I assume? At yeah. The end? So we're just going to do a real thin. See how this goes. Now I'm going to clarify the reason there's the film layer in the first place, of course, is to, to help with, you use it for wood, use yeah. it for the plastic uh, to prevent the scorching. But the problem is that when you etch, sometimes there's like it just really a melts tiny in piece <laughs> and you're literally trying to scrub that off with some sandpaper or something. Yeah. It ruins the finish. It defeats the whole purpose. Now, so, and then he said, we're going to hit it with the hair dryer here real quick. Okay. So we're gonna see if that works. Now that's not gonna that'll work on like plastics and metals or you know stuff like that. Wood, I would say probably not as much. Maybe something painted because it has that seal. But wood, you'd want to use the masking tape or like I st I still haven't ordered. It. I need to get the uh, it's um, I think it's called transfer tape, which is used for sign makers, which is a low tack masking tape and getting big sheets that we're gonna use on wood next time. But worst case, if you do buy a sheet of plywood that doesn't have friction covering even thin strips of masking tape. Yep. Work. And we, to be honest, we haven't done it on ours because the scorching has been so minimal. I hit it very lightly with some sandpaper, which took like a few seconds and it turns out really nicely. It's so. all about finding yep. the right settings to minimize scorching, but yep. still get that good etching and the good cutting. Yep. Okay, so uh, new materials, we have uh, this brass colored sheet. Oh, we're gonna do some orange too. Ooh. Yeah. Because we got, so we got some tested orange here. Nice. Um, because uh, we got an industrial robot. I figure that's a very good, like, safety orange color. And then we're going to be doing our traditional, uh, like, probably maple and walnut as our two woods. So one, one more tip just as far as laying out. Um, we're re reusing uh, our wood blanks from the previous projects, and we want to utilize that to the max. So we're going to lay this out to take advantage of the available spaces on the wood. Right. So... 
<clears throat> if I'm going to like a store and buying a big sheet of material, right, I'm gonna cut it out to fit the bed of the laser cutter. Right. But I also, it's almost like this Tetris style <laughs> jigsaw. You're, you want to make maximize this at the end. You have this honeycomb exactly. skeleton of a sheet. Uh, but keeping track of it, there's no software that does that for you. Not as far as I know. That would be nice. Uh, but you can do it easily. So the, the Illustrator file we have here is represents the print bed. And uh, I take measurements off of our existing wood. So I know it's about uh, 12 inches. So I'm just going to go up here on the ruler and drag one of Illustrator's guides down, which are just um, they're non-intrusive reference points for uh, laying things out. So that's going to represent the bottom of our wood. And then uh, I'm going to drag another one over to the avail to represent the available space that we have uh, to cut with. So it's like right about there. And we already have some stuff up top, so we'll drag another guy down to represent that. And then we're just going to take all of our stuff here and drag it into our available cut area. Oh. Like so. Cool. So now, uh, once we send this to the printer, it's not up in the origin space, but this is where it's going to cut correctly on our piece of wood that we have space on. Okay, Sean. Wow, these pieces turned out pretty awesome. Yeah, looking good. Oh, look at that one. Yeah. Some deep engraving on there. Yes, deep. That's what I was noticing. Yeah, of course, the, the, the these are real nice. These these are engraves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And raster, yeah, raster, raster engraves. engraves. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, a little bit of finishing needs to happen before we can start assembling this together. So what do we have to do first? Uh, we're gonna, so we tried the dishwashing detergent thing, so I have some damp paper towels that we're gonna wipe off the metallic pieces mm -hmm. and see how that turned out. All right. And then um, we're gonna do some light sanding on these because I, I, did, I still don't have the masking tape. So that takes a few seconds. And then I'm gonna try something fun on the robot arm before we peel off the paper, and we'll get to that in a minute. I mean, looking at, oh, let's pop this out. Even looking at the metallic pieces right now, there's not a lot of scorching mm -mm. at all. Um, I, can, I, I think, can, think it worked out okay. I can see the texture of the, uh, the detergent, you know, the soap <laughs> yeah, you put on. Yeah, some fingerprints right there. there. Yeah, some fingerprints, but I've, I'm pretty confident that once we wipe so, this off, I think it's that's okay. gonna be fine. And do you have the, uh, the other color metallic pieces? Yeah, they're up here, they're the brass. Oh, yeah. okay, that definitely has a little bit more scorching. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm still messing with the settings uh, to burn through that top layer, so I haven't quite gotten my final, final setting. These are probably a little heavier than they needed to be. Yeah. as far as the engraving depth. All right, so while I'm doing that, uh, do you want to talk about what we're going to do for yeah. the orange piece? Well, here's, um, we love this look so much that, that, that when it burns to that top layer, so I thought with the orange robot arm, what we could do is we could try going over uh, the engraving lines with a Sharpie while the paper's still on it, so it's going to ask as, act as its own masking. Yes. And then we peel it off, I don't know, it might look cool. Yeah, and so, this is actually, if you're gonna buy material like acrylic that already has the sheet on, yeah. you can you have free masking, yeah, essentially. It's pretty Precision great. Precision masking so with the laser cutter. We're gonna see how this looks. Now, you could also do this with paint, I'm sure, but since we're trying to do this real time, I'm gonna cheat and use the Sharpie. But I think, I think that's gonna actually work fine. And you're just using a black Sharpie? Yeah. You, know, you also have the option if we really wanted to get fancy to get like a metallic Sharpie yep, yep. or something in there. Yeah. That's nice. So we'll oh, this, see how this turns I out. gotta tell you, this stuff is coming off perfectly. Is it? Okay, good. Thank you, Dave Goldberg, for I this. I did that kind of uh, awesome. Tip. I did a quick job on that, so I wasn't sure how good of coverage I got on that. Yeah, very, very nice. And there is a difference between um, oh. the finish here, <laughs> not wiped off and wiped off. Yeah, Dave's been doing this so long. He just has a lot of good tips. And we're passing and he, those tips. And he f shares them freely, so we will try to pass them on to you guys. All right. Uh, this brass color piece is nice. Good. Really, really nice. I love these metallic uh, sheets. They just look beautiful. Yeah, look how shiny that is. 
and clean. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. I'll do a little A-B comparison. Wiped off right here, not wiped off. And I think you guys can see there's definitely a difference. It's like a polishing pass on this. Okay, how'd your um, your masking turn out? Mm, not as good as I did. Oh, uh, yeah? Was it bleeding or? Ah, uh, there is a little bleed. But I'm also thinking, hmm, I'm actually thinking I could have went higher on the engraved settings. You know uh. what, I think part of the problem is I'm being impatient and I didn't let the Sharpie dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's actually the biggest problem. You need that blow dryer again. Yeah, I, I already returned it, but. Uh, yeah, you know what, I think this would have worked out okay if I hadn't been impatient. Mm. What do you think, stick to it? Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna go stick for to it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try it Commit. on one. Yeah. Commit, John. Nice. Okay, one more piece for me. So and wipe I, off, and then I'll do some sanding. And I think uh, I think paint might actually be the better choice for, for this Not as well. Sharpie. Yeah, I think paint and then letting it dry, you'd be good to go. Indeed. Okay, everything is sanded. There's uh, dust everywhere, but that's good. Yep. Uh, the pieces look good. Let's take a look at this finish. I think the Sharpie idea, I think that has some uh, potential. Um, I didn't let it dry long enough, and I think that I could up the power on the engraving to make the lines a little deeper so it takes the either paint or Sharpie better. Mm. But I think, that, I think that's a good start. Mm. So I think we'll revisit that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the masking, you can t t clearly tell mm -hmm. getting into those crevices right there. I think it's gonna look nice. Yeah. Um, and of course, the wood sands very nicely. The metallic finish on this plastic looks amazing. So it looks like our dishwashing technique worked. Thank yep. you, Dave. And uh, it's, it'll be time to assemble. So once again, yeah. time lapse. And that's it, puzzle piece number three. Woo. Three different accent pieces. <laughs> Getting ambitious this, here, Sean. This, this has a, a lot of nice features too. There's a lot of depth to this one. And um, she is, and once we get this together, there's overlap with other tile pieces. Yeah. And the bolts are acting as the interlocks, which yes. is genius. Makes perfect sense Yeah. right here. Plus, you can tell the silhouette there for the alligator clip yeah. in the back. So we'll let's put them together. That. Oh my gosh, let's do it. All right, electronics. That's so cool. I love how the alligator clip works in there. Is uh, we have a little, there we go. There it goes. Fantastic. And we have a, a little warpage on our wood there. Yes. We'll fix that. And then we got, oh, that actually has to go underneath. Kind of. Oh, that's tricky. This is under, ah, oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Whoa. Oh. Nice. That is so satisfying. I love all the overlap between the two. That's yeah. really, really nice. Three out of nine complete. Thank you guys for watching and following along. We'll be back soon with puzzle piece number four and more tips for using our Universal Systems laser cutter. And of course, you can find the files 
for this entire puzzle online. We'll have the links in the description. Mm -hmm. Jen, of course, did an amazing job. Can't thank her enough. And we'll see you all next time.